Hi folks, welcome to Friday. You've made it to the end of your week. Well done. Well done, you're here. You're at the weekend. I have one very special hobby nightmare for you today by Dave Doggy or Dave Dodgy. I've, I've never really worked out how to say his name. Please put it in the comments below, Dave, if you know how your name is. Well, of course you know. It's your name. But yeah, this is going to be how not to be a Games Workshop Manager. Like, it's very rarely that I get a story where every single behavior exhibited by the Games Workshop Manager is the literal opposite of what you should do as a Games Workshop Manager. Let me just jump in, though, because I have a feeling that when Games Workshop tell you, um, and the theme this week is, of course, you know, um, not games not being played in the Games Workshop store. When Games Workshop tell you not to play games at a Games Workshop store, I think this is the kind of guy they're talking about, when, the kind of manager that they want to get rid of from their stores, right? I think they're trying to not have this guy in their stores running them. But let me just cut to the chase, shall I? Because I don't want this to be a long video. I want you to get on with your weekend. So, Dave says, Around 2017 to 2018, I frequented a Games Workshop, sh uh, Games Workshop shop in a big city in Spain, very near a famous football stadium. Is it near Bernabeu or is it in Barcelona? I don't know. Only as a quick in and out customer though, who bought hobby stuff that they needed in an emergency and then I promptly left the shop. Every time I entered the, G the GW shop and the manager who was there greeted me with open arms like I was a long lost brother shouting, Hey amigo, from across the shop, the second I entered the premises. Despite speaking Spanish myself, I was raised, educated and worked in England for most of my life. And I knew this to be the usual greeting that very false quote unquote people and ins insincere people quote unquote tend to give you in Spain. You know the sort. Those you don't know from Adam, but start patting you on the back and shoulders like you're, you're, you were faithful brothers in arms in wartime just after a successful mission. Needless to say, I didn't like it. Yeah, we get that all the time. Um, normally in England, I, when I've seen it, it's been on, on like the street and stuff when somebody like wants something from you. Like, hey, are you alright? Yeah, and, and they're all coming over to you with their arm around you. Yeah, fuck off. Like, get out my, get out my face. Like, I, 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 I don't want you around here, right? Anyway. The Spanish shop manager then proceeded with the usual sales pitch trying to trying to sell me anything and everything which I politely ignored as he proceeded to make me more uncomfortable as I knew exactly what I wanted and informed him so. Yeah, again, that happens that happens a lot. Uh, you are trained as a games workshop manager to uh, it's called engage customers. There was one time when I was having a short training session at the store whilst it was open, which is a stupid thing to do at the, at the best of times, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, like, like there, was, there was one time where I'm at my store, and a trainer from GW, let's call him Gary, and, and another woman from GW, let's call her Claire. Now, Claire was a known hottie, like literally, you know, you know. and Gary, of course, comes in trying to impress the hottie from, from office management, and he's talking to customers down his nose, and, and she's looking at him like, you know, come on, dude, like, don't be like that, you know, we're trying to, like, train him out to be a better manager, sort of a thing, so I'm sitting there intently listening to them talk about health and safety and things like that, and how things are meant to be run in the store, again, this is my first week as a games workshop manager, so I have to go through this training, uh, when Gary stops the training session and says, I'm sorry, but I think we're about to lose this customer, and points to a customer three feet away, imagine being that customer, how awkward would you feel, I'm just sending and looking at this box of Eldar Guardians like, dude, like, leave me, don't point at me, like, what are you pointing at me for? I'm just a customer, leave me alone. And so I had to go over to this customer who was three feet away and say, hey man, do you need anything? No, thank you. I'm just here for these games, for, for these uh, Eldar Guardians. I'm thinking about, about, about getting one or two. And I said, oh, cool, what are you using them for? He said, oh, I'm just starting an Eldar Force. I've already, I've already got to start collecting. I only need the one, but I, I'm thinking I might get two. I said, well, when in doubt, get two, you know what I mean? And he said, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? Because you were trying to make sales. And I said, indeed. And then walked back to where I was, I was sitting. But I was honest with him. He started laughing and he bought the two, right? Um, I was then reprimanded for that because I shouldn't tell people that I want sales. Yeah, and I was reprimanded in front of the customer as well for, for not... Oh, God, I fucking hated them. Anyway, moving on, moving on. Then one day in the shop, I noticed a Land Raider box with the Grey Knight's box art. Oh, I know the one. 
The box contents were the same as any other Land Raider, but the box art would have made a great reference photo for painting one up as in Grey Knight's colours. And I think it did come with a few Grey Knight's bits, just just uh, correction there. I think it did come with a few things you can stick on to make them Grey Knight's, but not very much. And I proceeded to pick it up, but suddenly that same Spanish Games Workshop manager came up behind me, which is, which is always good to startle your customers, and told me, don't buy that now, man. Buy it next week instead when we are having our, our store five-year anniversary. And when you buy something, you can pop a balloon and you may win a prize. I thought to myself, that's very odd. Why would a Games Workshop store manager decline a sale there and then? I could walk out the store and get run over, and that's a lost sale to him. Well, that's a bit melodramatic, but yeah, you could also go and buy it on eBay. Uh, regardless, I went along with the suggestion and decided to come back next week to maybe get something extra, and boy, did I get that shit. Right, so, or, or, or did I get shit for that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I love it when Spanish, people who are like fluent in Spanish, uh, do you speak as a first language, sort of like but say things like that, you know, and boy, did I get that shit. <laughs> it's like, what? What? Um, I get what you mean. I get what you're saying, though, Dave. I get what you're saying. So the, so the Games Workshop Manager is doing this because there is an internal competition about how much you can sell on your store anniversary. I was very proud of my two store anniversaries, and at least one of them, I broke a regional record of, you know, what, what of a one-day take at a store anniversary. So yeah, you do. The prizes are there for a reason. They're there to get people into the store. What I would have suggested is, as as that manager, saying, "Hey, man." I know you really want this, so I'll keep it behind the I'll keep it, keep it behind the counter for you. And if you come in on the store anniversary, you can get this, and I'll, and you'll be in the prize drawer as well. You know what I mean? Because then you're looking after the customer. You're not the customer isn't doing you a favor by not getting that there and then. The customer is do is is having their favor done for them by you, which means one of two things. It also means the customer feels good because they feel like you know you're actually doing you're going out of your way to do something for them. And number two, they're going to come back and buy that model because most Games Workshop uh, um, customers, if you if you push the boat out for them, man, they'll push it right back for you. You know, if you say, please don't go this elsewhere, don't get this elsewhere, don't say that to them, but say, hey, man, I'll keep this for you and you can get a prize. You can get, go in a prize draw if you get it on Saturday instead. Nine times out of ten, they'll say, yeah, man, that sounds really cool. Thank you. And they'll, they will come back and they will buy that product, you know. Let's see what happens, though. So, on the store... Games Workshop store anniversary day, I entered the shop and it was very busy and went directly to the shelf where the Grey Knight's Land Raider box was. It wasn't there. I proceeded to ask him about the Grey, Grey Knight's Land Raider box and he simply said, oh, we don't have it, and immediately tried to sell me some other stuff that I just didn't want. Yeah, typical GW tactic. And he was making his Games Workshop sales pitch to me. As he was doing that, I spotted the same Grey Knight's Land Raider box behind him on the shelf and pointed it out to him. Immediately, his face turned very angry and said, well, if you're going to be like that then, I won't bother. And then turned very quickly, physically turned his back to me, which I saw as very rude. Yeah, it is very rude. I suddenly realized that this guy was a two-faced weirdo who deserved a proper dressing down. But I refrained from doing that and gathered my thoughts as to what just happened in the moment during our exchange. I noticed that as I pointed out to him that he did have the actual, and in fact, Games Workshop Grey Knight's Land Raider in the box art, in the box towards his back, that his usual loyal followers who were there in the store, all at the same time, were right next to us and listening into our conversation. I had just inadvertently demonstrated in front of his, to of his toady retinue that the Games Workshop store manager didn't know his own shop's inventory, and this could possibly have angered the manager. Another thing that occurred to me is that around 2018, the, the Land Raider Grey Knight's box was becoming very rare as it had been out of stock everywhere for one plus years. I was sure that the eBay prices for it shot up and maybe the manager wanted it for himself, buying it at a discount and then selling it for an eBay at a higher, higher price later on. Yeah, you can get sacked for that. And I mean immediate sacking. There is no disciplinary action for something like that. It's one of the only offences apart from diddling kids that you will get an immediate dismissal from, from Games Workshop, is uh, buying the stuff for your store discount and then reselling it at a high profit. They even look down on things like buying a um, buying a gift for somebody if they're standing right there. I think I've said it in another, in another story on the channel where I once did that at a Warhammer store. I, I went in and bought a... a, um, a 
a model for somebody who was standing right there. I think, I think it was a Adeptus Sororitas, a Canoness or something, and got bollocked for it, essentially, because, you know, I shouldn't be doing that. But anyway, yeah, if any of those people even rat on him a little bit, that guy's gone. His job's gone. Done. Finished. Either way, I was, I was not happy, so I quickly went to the till with another Land Raider box in hand and bought it, but asked if I could pop the, a balloon for a prize anyway, and was told that all in the store anniversary balloons had been taken already. Wow. I later found out from someone else who frequented the shop that the Games Workshop store manager had organised and, and reserved balloon prizes for his in-store friends, so only uh, most people who were encouraged to buy items from his shop below a certain price threshold on anniversary day got nothing but were promised that they would do that is shitty behavior that is scummy 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 behavior saying to your customers come in and come in and buy anything on anniversary day and you can get a balloon to pop and maybe get a prize and then only giving those things to their own cronies and people who spend a lot of money that's shitty behavior but i can i can understand why they do it but at the same time just tell them what the what the prize is i did like in terms of my store anniversary, I was not allowed to give away uh, prizes for certain things. They gave me a list of the thresholds for prizes. And this was a, a, a HQ decided thing. I could have no... Um, I could have absolutely no control over it. So what I did, I gave away the Games Workshop store um, Primaris Marine cutout to one of the guys in the store. I, I did a raffle. And I said, right, one of you is going to have to carry this thing back in your car and explain this to your wives. And uh, a young guy won it. He's a really tall guy. He had autism. And he won it and was going crazy. And his mum turned up and he bought all this stuff with his birthday money. And his mum turned up and goes, oh, this is brilliant. Yeah, fantastic. He goes, why is he, why is he carrying that outside the store? I can't fit that into my car. And I was like, well, you're going to have to figure out a way to do it because he's not going to leave it here and I'm not taking it. <laughs> so... Luckily, I knew her very well, so she just started laughing. She was like, okay, thank you. Okay, I was like, okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, so he went home with this Primaris Marine. I hope he still got it in his room somewhere. That would be hilarious. But, yeah, so there are ways to get around shitty prizes and shitty things that Games Workshop do. Uh, one of them isn't to just make up your own and give prizes to the people that you know or the people that spend the most money in your store. That is shitty behavior. But it's not shitty behavior if it's, if it's explained that's what's happening. It's shitty behavior if you lie to people and say, hey, you know, you can win all this when they really can't, right? Regarding the in-store mates of the Games Workshop store manager there, some Spanish guy on the Google reviews of the shop wrote that he ran the store for a small clique of his friends, like a games club. He referred to it in the review as a chiringuito, chiringuito or beach bar, and that if you were not one of his favorites, you would not get treated well as a customer. Another Google reviewer states that there was dust on the product on the shelves. I noticed that on my trips to the store, there was physical dust on the Warhammer 40k boxes. He had some products that had been discontinued by Games Workshop years ago, and you couldn't even get on eBay anymore. Big sector imperialist ter terrain boxes, etc. Yeah, to be fair, I, I had those as well. Um, yeah, years afterwards. So this seemed to indicate that he didn't uh, shift stock and he took no pride in looking after his shabby-looking shop. Well, the, the Sector Imperialis train boxes I just put underneath the uh, hobby table. And I ended up using them for an in-store project because I couldn't sell them. Um, but I will say, though, that I was trained very well by my Games Workshop manager. The same one that gets lambasted on this channel sometimes. Um, our store was clept spotless out front in terms of dust and all manner of things. It was absolutely lovely. The way that we, you know, everything was, was covered, everything was was cleaned on a daily basis we were very meticulous about things like that and i was in my store too especially out front make sure that you get it all clean and everything's nice and put away you know it doesn't so matter what it looks like in the back right because it's only you seeing that but the storefront needs to look amazing obviously you need to find your stock in the back but you know apart from that how this manager still has a job is beyond me you know but apparently those are, uh, managers outside of the uk are given a greater leeway with store running because i'm telling you now if this games workshop manager is in the uk he loses his job after like a month after a month he's out like that they will they will find him they will visit him and they'll come down on him like a ton of bricks so dave says i did remember the games workshop manager was absent from the store for, for some months around 2016 2017 and that this was due to some operation he was having but that is no excuse for having such a shabby store and being a twat to customers when he returned 
I suspected he was not meeting sales quotas and had paid leave and was under pressure from, from Games Workshop HQ to start getting the store more profitable and that's why he, he behaved like a sly rat. But regardless, in 2020, he was no longer at the store. Yeah, no shit. They would have found him eventually. I'm not sure if he jumped or he was pushed, but 10 months later, he opened up his own gaming slash hobby store, which is strongly focused on Warhammer slash Bolt Action in the suburbs of the city. And his shop is still going on, as far as I know. Okay, he probably took his cronies with him. He probably took the people from that store with him to his new store. But that is a bad way to run a business, right? You need to cultivate new people coming to the store all the time. Serving a small clique of people, that is what leads to the time vampires. That is what leads to falling sales in your store. There's only a few people are buying from your store. And those people are getting preferential treatment. And if you stop giving those, pre those people preferential treatment, guess what? They stop buying from your store. Because they're only loyal to the shit you can give them. Which is why you're loyal to no one. You want people to come into your store and enjoy the hobby. That's the way you're meant to run the bloody business. Dave says, I'm never going to frequent that store as I remember how he treated me as a customer. He must have a passion for the hobby, which is great, but I do wonder how he treats his less than favorite customers now that his entire business life is on the line with his own store. What is worrying is that I know he was trying to organize a big Warhammer 40k ITC tournament in our city and I would not attend that if so. Essentially trying to be the main man and power behind Warhammer 40,000 in our area. I don't think he's managed to do that. And, I, and he cannot compete with the likes of, of Talavera. The place where those Spanish right wingers caused a stir a few years ago. Yeah, I remember that. But it goes to show that some people who are real twats want to lead and organize hobby tournaments and events. And it makes me feel quite dis despondent. What bugs me about, about all of this is that I was polite and put up with the BS that a typical Games Workshop manager gave, gave me as a customer. And then suddenly when I ask about a product and later, or later find it in his store, I then very, very abruptly get turned on for the lamest of reasons. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to read the rest of this because he's just summing up his points essentially. Um, yeah, I... What I, what I will say is is that most of the hobbyists that I know that organize tournaments, and I know quite a few of them, are top, top, top blokes. There are a few, though, yes, who are anoraks, who are people who feel that the hobby is the defining force in their lives. So anybody who doesn't do it in exactly the same way that they do shouldn't be doing the hobby. In other words, remember that gatekeeping video I did the other day when I told you the bad and good parts of gatekeeping? That like 95% of people do the good kind of gatekeeping in, the, in our hobby, and the 5% don't. This guy's in the 5%. Totally. Totally, totally. You know, you're not playing with your toys in the same way that I am, so you can't do the toys. Go piss off. Fuck off. Go somewhere else. You know, that, that, is, that, that is one of the worst Games Workshop managers I have ever heard of sent in to me. Um, what I mean by that is, I don't mean by... We're no longer playing games in the store. We're no longer doing this in the store. What I mean is guys like this literally turning on customers and driving them away from the hobby. If you've ever been one of these Games Workshop manager, managers and you're listening to this video, go fuck yourself. Anyway, thank you very much for watching my video. What's your worst Games Workshop manager experience? Either put it in the comments down below or come and tell me in, in the, on the Discord. It's down below. If you like what I do, Patreon's down below too and all that fun stuff. Love you all long time. Have a wonderful weekend. And I will speak to you probably on Saturday because I'm thinking about doing some uh, live streaming. Or at least the podcast will probably be up on Saturday because I'm going to record later on today. Love you all. See you later. Have a good one. Bye.